Hi there, Mike Lopez here at Unicourse.org and in this video we're going to be looking at something called sinusoidal differentiation which means we're going to take some sinusoids as we'll see here in blue and we're going to differentiate them and differentiation essentially just means find the slope at various points and plot those slopes on a new graph and so we're going to start with typically a sine wave and show you how to differentiate it graphically and arrive at what we see here it seems to be a cosine wave okay the usual maths notation y equals sine t differentiate it and therefore you write dy by dt equals cos t and we can do that for these other three functions here y equals minus sine t which is just the same as this one flipped upside down okay so all the points are mirrored and this is reflected by this minus sign here and t just represents time on the horizontal axis going across here okay. and that will give you that one show you how to do that later we've got y equals the cos of t so the cosine wave always starts high as you know when you go on your calculator and type in the cos of zero it will always give you a value of one and you know we differentiate a cosine we should end up with minus sine t but you're not, not going to take my word for it you're actually going to um, deliberate on these actions yourselves and then um, hopefully after a little bit of practice these will be second nature to you we also look at an inverted cos and we should end up with this sine wave here another feature of this video is we're going to think about how can we actually implement this differentiation function in an actual circuit well we can do it with this two stage up on circuit here okay so we're going to talk about the features of this circuit as well well the first thing we'd like to do is have a look at the mechanics of differentiation so let's get on and do that <coughs> okay well let's start with a blank canvas and I'd like to initially concentrate on y equals the sine of t okay so t is our horizontal function time and a quick sketch of what a sine wave looks like okay not the best sketches in the world but hopefully you can follow these t on the horizontal axis um, maybe I could choose red for this graph so a sine wave you could probably draw it a lot better it's a bit like this and what I'd like to do is have a look at the slope of this sine wave in a few significant points so let me start by analyzing this point here okay so imagine you're traversing um, a journey like this and you're looking at there's you at the moment the purple dot and you're climbing up this sine wave at that point now what are you sensing well you're sensing a positive slope agree definitely you're going uphill so you would sense a positive slope so what we'd like to do then below here why don't we plot the slope and we can call it slope here's the positive slope that point there along that line will be zero slope and let me mark this as negative slope okay so this first point here I see a positive slope at this point in time so let me mark that and I'll use blue for this shall I okay let me mark that like that there is definitely a positive slope corresponding to that point in time let me then go over to our sine wave move over a little bit in time and have a look at this point here okay what slope is that well you're moving along a horizontal plane or you're walking along a floor if you like so or in this case a plateau so you're not actually sensing the slope at all you're just moving across horizontally so we deem that as a zero slope okay so you're not going up you're not going down you're just moving across so zero slope now zero slope to us um, 
on this graph is at the zero point here because this is a graph of slope okay let's move along to this point here and we're looking at well, an experience of going very steeply downhill in other words a negative slope okay now that negative slope on here not very well to scale but never mind is somewhere around there and we're going to do exactly the same as we move along further here and here yeah imagine you're in Australia but you're still walking on a floor if you like you know you've got zero slope there okay you're moving in a horizontal direction only you're not going up you're not going down so again we can mark this as a zero slope and finally we go back to this point here and what you're noticing here is exactly what you noticed over here okay so that is a positive slope yet again so we seem to have come full circle and there is positive on our slope graph now then you all enjoy joining the dots why don't we do that in green this is not going to look the most artistic wave but what I'd like to do is draw it in as best I can and hopefully you're going to see something that looks a bit like a cosine wave cos of t okay. so next time you're in the pub you can peel the cover off a beer mat and you can plot all these waves um, and work out what the differential is of them now when you come to look at integration what you could do is you could start with the green graph and you could actually work upwards here okay so you could integrate moving in this direction integration yeah or we move downwards here and of course that's what we initially did and that was differentiation okay so you start with something you differentiate it and you arrive at some function if you want to reverse the process you arrive at what your answer was you go backwards and you integrate so that's the essentials of differentiation integration now really differentiation actually is just finding the slope on any function at all okay so it could be for example a function like this let's just say y equals 2x here's an x-axis we use x rather than t use what you like engineering t, t seems to be more general and that is supposed to be a straight line slope there okay and you would say to yourself okay I'm going to plot my experiences this point here I can see a slope that looks like that this point here I can see a slope that looks like that this point here I can see a slope that looks like that and all these slopes look the same everywhere along the line so if you were to plot the slope of this thing what you would arrive at let me do it in green again maybe it would be something like this okay so a straight line so therefore what you can say here is dy by dx equals 2 and where is this 2? 2 is sitting there so that looks a bit like DC to an engineer okay that is the essence of performing differentiation on functions of any type really you just move along the function from left to right stop at various um, handy points, turning points like this or maximum slope points like this and you plot your experience um, your feeling of what the slope is and that you can arrive at all of these answers here okay 
let's move on to have a look at a circuit which can perform all of this differentiation for us. Okay, so here is our differentiator circuit. Now what you notice about this, if you like, dual circuit, okay, so we have two op amps. This first op amp area here does actually perform the differentiation for us and it's a case of putting a capacitor on the inverting input and the feedback resistor is arranged like this okay and notice you've got the non-inverting input down to ground and here I've just indicated a 10 Hertz 1 volt peak sine wave which is what we used in those graphics earlier okay so I'm going to push in a 10 Hertz in other words 10 cycles per second or 0.1 seconds periodic time sine wave which has a peak value of one volt goes into this differentiator um, and because it's arranged going into the inverting input what's going to come out here at this point will be your answer but flipped upside down now, we don't really like to see upside down answers so that's the reason for using this circuit here so this circuit here has one meg and one meg okay so it's just an inverting op amp so as you know the gain is minus r3 over r2 because they're both one meg one meg over one meg gives you one so this just gives you a gain of one but it gives you an inverted gain of one so because this circuit here inverts the answer this inverts it back again and gives you the proper answer on the output here okay moving over here what we can see as we did earlier was that the input is there I decided to investigate the slope at this particular point and then I realized oh yeah it was high it was a positive slope there over here is the input again okay that corresponded to a zero slope which was there okay here's your zero uh, we moved over to what looked like a very steep descent um, down there okay so highly negative highly negatives down here As you can see we go against the negative region here we had uh, another plateau zero slope which is there and finally we decided to look at this point as well which was also positive so that went there and then you join the dots which all we've done for us which is handy because my drawing isn't the best then we ha arrive at this green function here which of course is a cosine wave okay so let's have another look back at that first graphic and see if we can easily determine the slopes of all of those sinusoids okay so now you know a little bit about the mechanics of differentiation let's return to this initial graphic here and revisit something we've seen before uh, we can start off with an initial drawing here Okay, measure the slope there, seems to be positive. Slope there, I've done this before, of course, is zero, which is there. Uh, slope here is highly negative. If you like, let me put in positive slopes and negative slopes over here. Okay, there we have a plateau, zero slope corresponds to that point in time and also that point there is highly positive and the dot are joined for us nicely okay and we see that we start with y equals the sine of t we differentiate and we get a waveform that looks like the cos of t and we can proceed for any input we want really so let's have a look at an inverted sine wave okay so you have to push this signal into a differentiator function or a circuit if you want 
Okay, we we'll differentiate this minus sine t. Okay, I'm proposing that's what comes out. Let's have a look and see if that's the case. Again, all we need to do measure the slope at a few points. Here we've got a highly negative slope. There it is. Here we have a zero slope, which is there. Here we've got a highly positive slope, which is that point. And here we seem to have zero flat slope again, which is there. And here we've got a highly negative downhill slope, which is here. Okay, so this is the negative for each of these. And then what you come to realize after a while is you don't actually need to plot one, two, three, four, five of these. You just need to plot two, like so. So the first one on this y equals cos t input has a zero slope and time is naught. So that corresponds to that point there. Then we move across to here and we see highly negative slope, it's downhill. Okay, highly negative is there. And because we have sinusoidal functions, what we always find is that these things when differentiated will always give you sinusoidal functions on the output. So we're expecting all of these shapes here in purple to be sinusoids of different phases of course. Okay, so that point there corresponds to that one, that one corresponds to that one. We know that if this thing goes down and takes a turn, it must go back up again. So we don't even need to bother to plot these because we know what they should be, okay, etc. And we can move and do the same with this one here. So we've got an inverted cosine. Uh, we look and we plot the point there. We see that is a negative. Uh, sorry, that's a, a flat or zero slope point. Okay, so zero slope there. Move across to here. That one's highly positive. It goes there. And then we project onwards and we realize this thing's gone up. It must go back down again. So it must yield a sine wave on the output. And that is basically the essence of sinusoidal differentiation. Thank you. This has been Mike Lopez and see you again in the next video.